double derivative, second derivative is going to basically have the same pattern to it, but where there was an x, there'll be a y, um, so that will save us a little bit of time. Um, You know what, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make all of this a big fraction because it'll have the same denominator as that. Okay, so I am multiplying by, I'm multiplying this through, but at the same time, I'm also trying to make this whole thing a fraction with this as the denominator so that it matches that denominator. <laughs> Who's that? But, but these are numbers. Can't you see them? I see that. Alright, so then both of those now have the square root of x squared plus y squared as the denominator. Oh, wait a minute, hang on. If I distribute this through, that has the denominator, but it, it, I distributed that through, but to get, for this, this right now doesn't have any denominators, so if I wanted to have that as a denominator, I have to multiply by another square root of x squared plus y squared. So like this I distributed through, so that gave me one of the square roots of x squared plus y squared, but then for this to have that also is the denominator, I need to multiply top and bottom by another square root, so the two square roots will make that to the first power. And then the reason why I did that was because this is the same base, and so if, you know, for example, if I had three halves divided by one fourth, that's same as 3 halves times 1 fourth, and my two denominators show up in the single denominator. So this denominator and that denominator, I could, re I could rewrite that whole big fraction with a denominator of x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves power. Because I have x squared plus y squared to a power of 1, and then times x squared plus y squared to a power of a half. And then up here, we'll have minus x squared 